reading from Romans 8, from the first verse, there is no, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life, in Christ Jesus, listen carefully, the life in Christ Jesus, we cannot wait for somebody to come, we live in Christ Jesus, because there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. If we are not in Christ Jesus, we have condemnation because we are in the darkness. Christ is the light. If I am not in Christ, I am in the dark. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. This is the flesh and the fleshly mind. That has to be broken down because that is the flesh. That is the fleshly thoughts and the lusts of the human and the desires of this illusion, which, which keeps the, the soul separated from the ocean. And while the soul is separated from the ocean, we will always be in pain. You can have all the money in the world. You can have all the luxuries of the world. You can never be happy, because your soul is in prison. And your soul is God. That is your freedom. That is your light. That is your being. That is why you were created from eternity. And now is your opportunity to separate the soul from the mind and become one with your destiny. Become one with God. And that is why I say there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. How can there be condemnation if you become one with the Father? If I'm one with God, if I'm in His kingdom, how can there be condemnation for me? The condemnation has come. I have died. I have conquered. I have to teach the others to conquer the flesh, how to free the soul. That is my, my task. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. Of course it was weak. The, the law could not be upheld by me when I am in the flesh. When I have my fleshly thoughts, I always try to, to conquer the darkness. But as long as there is flesh, my lusts will remain. As long as the flesh remains, I remain an animal. I cannot become man. Because man is, is the creation of God. That is Adam. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. If I live in this world and its desires, and I want all the fancy things of this world, and that is what makes me happy, I will live after that. But the arm of flesh will fail you. It will hurt you. Because the flesh will be hurt. That's the darkness, that's Lucifer. You will be hurt. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they, they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because I have conquered this illusion. And it is no more part of my life. I have peace. What will be, will be. My task is to win souls for my Father. And whatever else happens is part of people's karma and part of this illusion. We can control it. We can control it. But God will make us available when we have to change, when we have to heal somebody. He will make our bodies available at that time. We don't go running around and say we're going to heal everybody. God does not do that. That's their karma. We can't go taking everybody's karma away. Jesus did not do that. Jesus healed those who were on his path, and so Jesus do today. He will heal those who come on your path. You not Jesus, but the Jesus Spirit is within you, and he does the healing, not the, the flesh, 
the flesh is dead, but the flesh has died, and God has made his abode within the vessel, and he's the one that does the healing, he's the one that does the deep delight, not the human being. That is why they never accepted, Lazarus was never accepted by the rich man, because he was in a simple human form. He could not accept that poor man. He wanted a Jesus with wings to come down from somewhere and teach him these teachings from this fantastic God. God is fantastic. Don't misunderstand me. He is my father. He is my life. And the human cannot accept this to bring God to them. Even the preachers, even those who have learned friends that have studied the Bible, they are waiting for God to come. And they can never accept these false prophets to them. They cannot see God. They have no eye. They cannot see God in man. And they do not know that they have to become vessels where God has, made, has to make their abode within. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. How can flesh and blood, which is enmity to God, we say that, or the people say, that we will enter, we will arise, arise from the grave, and we will get on the clouds and go to the kingdom of God. The flesh and blood, the flesh is enmity to God. How will God take the flesh into his kingdom? This is part of the illusion. This is part of the astral. This has to remain. The spirit inside has to get life. That is the spirit. That is life. This cannot have life. The life inside is the spirit inside, which has to be replaced with, with light, from darkness to light. Neither indeed can be so that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. If the fleshly mind still controls this body, we cannot please God. How can we please God? Because the darkness is controlling the body. We cannot please God. We can only please God when the light is working through us because He's pleasing Himself. What can I do for God? I can do nothing for God. God is serving people and teaching people through me. What can I give God? The clothes I have, God gave to me. Everything I have, God gave to me. What can we give God? We can give God nothing. Everything we have, God gave us. If I have to give Him something, it was something He gave me. I have nothing to give God. So, then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. You are not more in the flesh. The flesh has been conquered. If the Spirit of God lives within and through you, you have now become the light. You have become the vessel for the light. The darkness which used to be you has been conquered. You live no more. The Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you are waiting for Christ to come, you are none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. The sin has been conquered. The light is shining. The righteousness has become you. The sin has been conquered. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his sin that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. You owe the world nothing. You have been in bondage and imprisoned. 
by this world forever. You could never break free. You never had the gate. And when you had the gate in your former lifetimes, you could never see that this was the door to break out, to break away from the astral. So you won't return to the darkness. You did not know that. You didn't have this light. You did not know that God can make his abode within you. You prayed to a Jesus far away and a God far away. You did not know that God came near. Although you had the same Bible as everybody else, but God did not reveal this to you. Many seek, but few shall find. Only the chosen ones will receive this light. And that is why it's very important to understand this. For if you live after the flesh, he shall die. Of course, the soul shall remain dead. The soul cannot escape. The soul is covered in darkness. For as long as the mind is controlling the body, the soul is imprisoned. That which is from God is imprisoned in darkness. It cannot return to the ocean. It will remain in prison. But if he through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, he shall live. If you mortify the deeds of the body, he shall live. If I conquer the mind and rid myself of the, the lusts and the love for this illusion, I shall live. But as long as the, the darkness conquer the mind and controls this body, and I still want part of this illusion, I'm dead. I cannot live. The soul is in prison. The body is in prison. My, my whole spirit is in prison by the darkness. No matter if I go to church 24 hours a day, it's totally immaterial. I have to be free from the darkness, which is the flesh controlling me and controlling the Christ and my soul. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You are the sons of God. For he have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We have not received the spirit of bondage to fear. Once we have conquered the darkness, we fear nothing. We have become the creators. We are now the creator to bring the light to others. Not us, because we have died. And God has become the, the power through us. We are merely vessels. The darkness has died. The Satan has died. The mind of man has died. Of the human. The animal is gone. There is no more animal. It is only God the light. Working through this vessel. And Jesus Christ. Making his abode within others. Through the word. The spirit itself. Beareth witness. With our spirit. The Spirit itself, capital letter, the Spirit of God, beareth witness with our spirit, our spirit and soul which have been cleansed. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ, Christ in us, we will join one with Him, we become one with Him. Paul said, I died with Christ. And I arose with Christ. I died. I went through a lot of pain to conquer this illusion. It is not easy. It's a straight and narrow path. It's very hard to follow. To pick up my cross and die as a son is not easy. It's extremely difficult. Jesus said, Father, let this cup pass me by. You will say the same. It is not easy. That is why so many of have come to this path, but few find it, few walk this path, few complete it, because it's too hard. Once you start this path, then the friends come and they pull you away. The seed is sown on the by the wayside. You don't accept this word. It's very hard to accept. But we become heirs. Is with Christ. 
Why? Because we are children. And Christ, we have taken Christ's form. We, I used to be the darkness. Jesus the Christ, that spirit which is named by God as Jesus, which was born within me and magnified the light, became me. Me and my Father became one. Me and Jesus Christ became one. My spirit has taken on His likeness. He created me according to His image and likeness, which is light. The darkness is gone. If so be that we suffer with Him, we have to suffer with Him. Because sometimes the world crucified Christ and sometimes we have to be crucified. I have only one, cro one cross. And this cross is embedded in my earth. This cross, I can only crucify one person at a time. I cannot be on the cross and Jesus on the cross. If I do my will, and I do the will of the darkness of the flesh, the darkness, Christ is on the cross. He cannot move. Something that's crucified on a cross cannot move. When I put Jesus on the cross, He's crucified. He can't move. He can't control my body. He can't control my heart. Because now it's Lucifer's chance. He's turned to control. The flesh is now controlling. Now I'm back in the business. I am back in the, this illusion. Christ must wait. I've crucified him now. But when I crucify myself, my, dog, my flesh, my thoughts, if I crucify that, Christ is free to use this body. He will be the driver of this body. And I will be crucified until such time that I die. And those thoughts for the greed and the lusts for this physical universe have died totally and do not exist. Then I become an heir. But as long as the darkness exists and my greed and lust for this physical universe exists, the darkness remains. And it will be magnified when two or three are gathered in, in Lucifer's name and we discuss the physical things. It will be magnified. It's logic. But when Christ controls and the flesh has died, I have no more fear. Because what shall I fear? God has become my life. I have no fear. When God is with me, who can be against me? I fear nothing. My Father created this universe, the physical and the astral and the heavens. I have nothing to fear. I have died. Nobody can hurt me. They can hurt this flesh. But that's part of the dust. But that which God has created in me, is in the kingdom already. The soul has gone back into the ocean. And once it's back in the ocean, it becomes the ocean. This physical body is part of this illusion. Whatever happens to this physical body has to happen. It is no fear. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. This world, we, you, may have anything you want in this universe. And it cannot compare to the freedom and the light when you enter through that door. And you see God. There is nothing in this universe. God has made this. God has created this. God has created Satan. God has created the astral with all the animals and all the life and the oceans and the life within and the seasons and the winds and the suns and the stars. He created all of it. And that creator, we can be a part of him, but we remain a part of the darkness. Why? Why do we want to be a part of the, the creation? Where we can be a part of the Creator? Why do I want to be a part of illusion when I can be a part of reality? And why we have condemnation? There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Why do I want to be in Lucifer if I can be in Christ? Why? Because we do not know. Those who do not know have no sin. 
But once you have listened and you understand his teachings, the light will be there. You will be guilty. You will have no excuse once you leave the body. What will you tell God? You cannot tell you God you did not know. You know. Because he revealed it to you. The same God that speaks to you through man will be the one you will talk to when you leave the body. And you can say, but I did not know. Don't see the flesh. Because as long as you see the flesh, you miss God. When you see the human body, you can't see the Spirit speaking to you. The Lord speaketh to your Lord. The light communicates with your light. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of him. God, Jesus himself, is in the midst of him. Jesus is no physical being which will come to you. If you accept his children, you accept him and father that sent him through the human. That is our simplicity. And that's why I said that for I reckon from the 18th verse, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. In us. In us the door has to be broken. broken. In us the wall of partition has to be broken. In us the veil has to be lifted to see the light and enter into the kingdom of God. Luke 17, the kingdom of God is within you. And when that wall is broken down, then you go in. Inside. This is a door you go in, through, into the kingdom of God. Revealed in us for the earnest expectations of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. The other people who are still as animals and creatures, they are waiting for your manifestation. You must mani man manifest Christ to them. They must see this light. You must manifest Christ to them. Through the sons of God, the light will come. You have to bring the light. You have become part of the ocean. You have become a vessel through which God will work. It is no more an illusion. It has become reality. The flesh, which was this illusion of darkness and this fake reality, which we used to be a part of, has been taken away. The veil has been lifted. But it will only be lifted through the sons who have received the light. You cannot bring light if you're in the darkness. God bless you.